Hi, good morning. We're here with Vicky Humberstone from Voice Power. How are you doing, Vicky? I'm good, thank you. Good stuff. Thank you very much for joining us. So if you could kick things off and just give us a little bit of an introduction as to who you are and what it is you do and how long you've been doing it for, please. Yes, yeah, so I'm Vicky and my company is Voice Power Limited. So this is my 14th year of working in working, well, all in voice power. Um, so we specialize in the speech recognition and digital dictation solutions. We are a partner of Nuance, who is now been recently bought out by Microsoft. So it is the Dragon speech recognition software, but we also work with Philips and Olympus for the digital dictation as well. And our specialism really is our training and support that we offer. So we're not, um, you know, just shifting licenses and selling licenses. It's more about working with clients to look at what they want to improve and then how we can come in and make the solutions work for them. Fantastic. What was the spark then that led you to, is it start the business 14 years ago? How did you get into it? Yeah, it was a bit, oh, no, it didn't start. <laughs> so Voice, Voice Power was an existing company. So Voice Power right. has been going for well over 23, 25 years now. Um, and it was started by a, a married couple, Colin and Catherine. And it was very much born with the speech recognition as an assistive technology. Yeah. That is how Voice Power started. Um, so Sonia Brown, who I owned the company with for just, I've um, been solo, sole owner for ne over a year now. So we bought it together, but Sonia was already working for Voice Power. So she was, she started as a temp and kind of did every role within Voice Power and ended up as a director. And then Catherine and Colin were at the age where they wanted to retire. The cat, they then just said to Sonia, you know, would you like to buy Voice Power? Her, Sonia's knowledge and expertise wasn't sales and management, which mine was. So I was in recruitment and um, we were friends outside of work. And just she kind of said, Vicky, would you like to buy a business? Would you like to buy Voice Power? <laughs> I was at the point in my life where I'd worked so hard, got married, you yeah. know, I was at, and I was ready to have children. That's what that was my goal. I was just like, yeah. And then you know, I, I kind of live my life by not having any regrets. I don't want to have any what ifs in life. Sure. So it was a really hard decision. But I thought, well, if I say no, I'm always going to think what if. Yeah. So I had to do it. I just had to do it. But I'll be honest, I was a bit naive. I thought it would be easy. And I remember saying to Sonia, you know, I want a year off and um, I'm only going to work <laughs> three days a week. And Sonia was like, yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, and it obviously was not easy, but yeah, I did it. So I was I was three months pregnant when I signed, you know, to buy Voice Power. Yeah. Um, so it was all, it all happened um, at it. once. But um, then, yeah, now 14 years later, and then last year, Sonia decided, because she'd been with Voice Power for over 20 years, mm -hmm. um, and her and her husband wanted to set up a, a school. So his, yeah, so completely a big change for her. And I think we always said, you know, we would leave together. You know, that yeah. was always our plan. But I, that just wasn't the right time for me. And then I thought, well, this is another really exciting challenge because I get to do it on my own. You know, owning it with somebody, it's it's very different. So I thought, yeah, let, let's do it. And um, it's been the best thing. I've absolutely loved this last year because it feels like it's it's all me now yes. you know I mean Sonia were a great team but it was you've always got that other person haven't you and it's you have to make those decisions you're together. still friends with Sonia after that 14 years yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 our husbands are best friends and yeah. you know um it just was never what we thought thought the end would be but then it's all worked out you know so, really well so going out on your own then over the last year how how would you describe that journey to date from being in partnerships? And yeah, it was it was terrifying at first because I had to. So Sonia was more the operations side of the business and then I was always the sales. Um, so it was I then had to sort of learn her, her role, mm -hmm. which at first I was just that's not my strength. You know, yeah. that was why we were, we worked so well together because it was we, you know, we my strengths were her weaknesses and vice versa. Um, 
so I, it, it was terrifying. And at first I said, I'm never going to get this. I'm never going to, you know, and then I just had to really, you know, use the team. So there's Becky within my team who took on quite a lot of her roles. Mm -hmm. We have an amazing accountant that helped, you know, with the finance side of things. Um, but then I just had to trust myself as well. So there was lots of processes that I was thinking, well, I would do it this way. Uh, but then it was having the confidence to go, yeah. right, you can change this. And this is now the way you want to work as it's your business. Um, so it went from being terrifying, oh my goodness, what have I done, to the, I feel like I'm a, a proper business owner now, if that makes yeah, sense. Empowering. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, empowering. It, it's me, and yeah. you know, and I don't have to consider anybody else now. This is just how I want to do things, and um, and yeah, how I want to run Voice Power. So it's yeah, it's it's scary because you don't have that. You know, on the bad months, it was me and Sonia. Yeah. Now it's all, it, it is all on me and my family. So that causes you more sleepless nights, I think, on that that side. Yeah. But the day-to-day -day running and, the, you know, and, and where I kind of see voice power, it's a, it's lovely just that it, voice power is now a reflection of me, Vicky sure. Humberstone. Um, so have you, so you set a vision for the next few years then of where you want to take it? Yeah, I'm not one of these that um, has these five-year plans. I find that quite hard. I do plan ahead, but I kind of work to that six month, one year, you know, the realistic side of it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, lots of lots of changes really. In and that's not just you know me, uh, Sonia going because I think if Sonia was here, we would be doing similar things because yeah. the technology is changing all the time. But it's really interesting with voice power. So I mentioned before the business started as a, as accessibility. And then obviously it developed into this amazing efficiency tool. So healthcare is our largest sector, which I, I, I love working in healthcare because we're all patient, aren't we? And you can really yeah. see the benefits that it yeah. has. But now it's coming back to um, the accessibility side again. So, you know, companies have a huge resp legal responsibility to make sure that everybody can access their workflows no matter what disability they have so we're now we have matt in our company who's an expert in that field so this is another real exciting part of the business that's grown again um and and we love that because it's life-changing for a lot of people you know this isn't about just about that access accessibility then to expand yeah. on what you mean by that. Yes. So um, so if you think somebody has a disability, mm -hmm. you know, um, the speech recognition is that powerful. You can do everything by voice. So yeah. we've worked with clients that are paralyzed, can't use the hands, mm -hmm. and they are relying on their voice, you know, to just have a life, you know, be able yeah. to go onto the internet. And, but, you know, that's, complicated so that's where the expertise has to come in because there are things that we need to do with the software to get it to do everything by voice it's not a case if you just turn it on and off off you go yeah. um so you have that extreme side but then you have somebody who might have repetitive strain injury they might have dyslexia you know lots of different accessibility um issues that the software can help them in their day-to-day -day work so um, we work a lot in government, you know, um, organisations now because legally they do have to look at um, making sure that everything is, uh, their applications that they're using are yeah. accessible to everybody. Um, and it made us, re as a company, voice power as well, you know, practice what you preach. We've recently changed all of our website because ours wasn't accessible enough. Yeah. you know so we went and changed everything yeah. and invested in that and you know we just launched that in January and again a reflection on the changes and and how I want you know voice power to be to be seen but it was also looking at you know somebody can go and look on our website and it's accessible to everybody so that's really really exciting that sort of feels like we're going a little bit full yeah. circle but yeah, yeah. You know, you've got the efficiency side mm -hmm. and then you've got, you know, the accessibility side. So what 
talking of uh, challenges and changing things, what's the biggest obstacle you've had to overcome, do you think, in mm. business to date? Is it that becoming a sole business owner? <laughs> um, on the way so far. The the biggest challenge, I think, was buying Voice Pro in the first place and being becoming a mum. You know, that was uh, that was probably... I'll always look back on that time as one of the hardest times in my career. Yeah. Um, and I think anybody who's got a, who is a working parent will understand that. But then chucking actually owning the business and, you know, and all of the stresses that come with that. But on a positive of that as well, it's yeah. given me the flexibility with my children, I, which I don't think I would have been able to have had if I was employed. You know, I, and I encourage that with my team as well. We're really fo- family orientated and I believe in flexible working and work life balance. Um and yeah, so you know, I can work the business around the, the children as well. So it was hard, but then yeah. I see the benefits of it now later, yeah. later in life. But the, the biggest challenge if we're looking at voice power and what we provide is I still think it's that um fear of technology. You know, people are still a little bit frightened of technology and I, you know. We, we, we all have these conversations, don't we? Oh, AI is going to take over the world and it's going to replace humans and things like that. Yeah. Um, it's it's not, it's not. <laughs> but it needs to be seen as that as a tool. It's a tool for us humans, isn't it, to improve our lifestyles, um, help with disabilities, improve efficiencies. But it needs to be done right. And that is still the biggest challenge is that, if I look at healthcare, you know, they'll implement lots of different software. These poor yeah. clinicians, no wonder there's burnout. And because that, you know, try this, try that, trial this, trial that. And 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 it shouldn't be like that. Um, and if it's if it's managed correctly and that you have a project team and the change management is done correctly, then technology shouldn't be scary and it shouldn't be a burden. It should just be an easy natural flow to help that person in their working life or in their their day-to-day life but that is still a challenge and money cost you know the speech recognition is a big investment and I think you know it's still that um conversation of buy cheap and all you know it's still the same you know it's you've got to invest in it correctly Sure. Is this uh, when you talk about some of the uh, obstacles to overcome when you're making doing marketing and, and sales of your of your service that uh, yeah. your customers yeah. are not necessarily as receptive because the amount of change that kind of comes comes at them on a probably yeah. week to week, month to month. That's basis. it. That, yeah. That's it. And and some people get fearful. You know, they think they're going to lose their jobs. You know, sure. and yeah. especially secretaries admin role where they've been you know doing the typing for a doctor or solicitor yeah. and then what we sell is that's that's removing that yeah so you know you you've got hr issues as well as a business you know so again it's 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 working with our clients to to project manage it correctly and to make sure that they're aware well if you are going to implement this you do need to be speaking to your you know your admin secretarial team because they will be frightened um but it you know it it's like anything isn't it I think if it's a if it's if it's done correctly and people feel like they've had the time and the support to learn a new system Mm -hmm. we all know what it's like when you've got to do some we 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 are creatures of routine aren't we oh that's it and there's also fear of as you say that fear thing of of change but things are always constantly changing and you can embrace an attitude of going with the mm. change and understanding that you can get better with yeah. it yeah. that's going to help you definitely definitely and just them being able to see it you know working as yeah. well so we do lots of trials with our clients just to give them that sort of confidence and and again from the finance side that they're going to get that return back on investment sure. um and they've been really powerful you know, just to sort of give people the confidence before they then buy it. Brilliant. So in all your experience today, what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned since being in in business, if there's one that you could share? 
<laughs> one or two might come out. Yeah. Often does <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, gosh, I think the biggest lesson is, you know, I think be pre- be prepared. Be prepared because I think being a business owner can be lonely. So I think, you know, having a network, a good network of other business owners, making sure that you've got the support of family and friends as well. And I, and again, this is just my preference. I always plan for every scenario. So, you know, I have a plan A, B, C, you know, off we go. Um, Because I just think you can never take anything for granted as well. I sort of live my life a bit like that. I mean, I, you know, the, the reason my voice power is so successful is I have an amazing team, but I'm always prepared that one of them might just decide they need a change and that would be a really detrimental impact on the business but if I'm planned and I sort of have a you know I'm always thinking well if that happened what would it what would I do yeah. and and that helps me sleep better at night yeah, so I think it's you're... yeah yeah be be planned and yeah. and again financially for for me in a small business it can only take a few bad months and you know you can be ooh. So I always like to think of, you know, have six months of all your, what it costs to run your business, know that you've got that in the bank. And, and again, it's, it's all about, you know, looking after your own mental health, isn't it? When you're running a, running a business and you never get to switch off. So you have to be, you know, I really, I really sure like that. That linking your business activity with what you're doing and the planning. Yeah. Uh, and what if scenarios with your mental health <laughs> because definitely they are uh, to- totally linked and mm-hmm. by the sounds of it you've got some great um uh, plans in place for for should mm-hmm. anything happen that it helps you yeah. and, it, and in that you're then going to feed better decisions because you're not yeah. worrying about the what ifs yeah 100 percent. you know you have to be i always say you've got to be fit to own a business mentally yeah. and physically because it is i mean that's the thing i think everyone probably isn't aware of until you own a business you do not get to switch off you know you might go on holiday but you're not getting to switch off <laughs> yeah. it's just, you know i've got walk with my husband and he's like vicky vicky what are you thinking about and i'm already <laughs> thinking that it's just yeah. and you can see it in my face you know because it's just you know but it's because we care and we're passionate and we want to you know keep keep you're responsible for other people aren't you you know yeah. other people's families um so I you know you wouldn't I always think I wouldn't go and run a marathon without training and I think if you're going to set up a business I think you have to look at it like that you need to be you need to put the training in you need to be prepared you need a plan you need to make sure you've got your financials in order and you need to make sure that you're in a right the right headspace to be ready to do that sure. because i think there's lots of people that sit there and think oh that's easy and uh, until you're in that mm-hmm. you know and i've been employed and i'm now it's not easy i promise you but there are lots of rewards that come yeah. with it and i for me my biggest my the biggest bit that I love about owning a business is I'm the master of my own destiny you know I'm riding I'm driving my own car kind of thing and I love that because I can just you know make a decision quickly Mm -hmm. we can change direction quickly and that's the the biggest benefit for me because I've worked in big organizations where to get a decision I had to go through five different people in your way in a week for an answer for something crazy um (laughs) So it's wonderful to just know that, you know, you can, you can change and adapt. Is that um, what inspires you to do what you do? Or is this uh, things that uh, come into it? People? I think inspiration is, I mean, the team, I, you know, I do really care about my team and, and I want to always be a good employer mm-hmm. um, and for them to be happy. So, and I do believe in that because I think if they're, if they are happy in their own personal life, I know I can't, you know, that's up to them, isn't it? But making sure that they're happy at work and has a positive effect at them in their home life then comes back into, to voice power. And, and, and I really do think the team are happy, you know, so that gives me a lot of inspiration and I want to carry on making sure voice power is that 
company that people want to work for. But then on the personal side, it is my family, you know, two two young girls. And I think being a good role model to my daughters, um, being a working parent, you know, sometimes you feel like never doing anything really well because you're doing lots of different things. But I say it to my team as well, you know, you can do it all. You can do it all. If you've got the right support and you do work for a good employer, you can be a parent and you can work. Yes. Um, and I and I really want to show, you know, we were talking a bit earlier, weren't we, about how hard it is for young people now in social media. And I'd hate to be a teenager now, and but I want to show my girls that if they work hard and you know they they put the effort into something and they really believe in something, then they can achieve it. Definitely. And they see they see me doing that. But I think I'm a good mum as well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. How would how would your team describe you? Do you think? Um, a little, little, probably a little bit crazy, funny. I like to say funny. <laughs> I think yeah. I'm funny. I sing to them a lot. Um, no, I think, and I see. I think they would say I'm passionate. I'm positive. I'm very motivated. I'm consistent. You know, I'm not one of these managers that you you know this is. Yeah. But they know I'm fair. You know, and and. Um, I'm honest and open with them as well. So I'd like to say they'd say things like that. Are there any any podcasts or books or anything that you listen to that you use for inspiration? Or um, I don't, people? yeah, I don't do podcasts. I probably should, but I do read. I'm really trying to read. Um, so I've been, I've, I've been reading a lot on coaching and mentoring just to make sure that I'm always, being the best that I can be and I love I love you know all of all of that side of it as well um so the hidden leader I found that really useful um and what then I've been doing in, in that sorry what have you found useful in that in the hidden leader I just loved things like the questioning and you know when you're doing sort of like your reviews yeah. and meeting with the the teams how you can you know and what else? I love that. So, and what else? And it, it, but you know, just little tweaks, just little yeah. tweaks that you no, I can do. Yeah, it, it's interesting reading those things. It always just taking one or two bits that because yeah. there's so much in information out there that you can tap into and what is relevant and what do you use. But yeah. if you take one or two things and just put that in on a week, yeah, read something else the next week put something else yeah. in and just continually build your own skill set yeah yeah definitely and neuroscience as well I've yeah. been reading that <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah you know it makes you think but it's good stuff that I can use in my personal life as well as a parent not just for the team but you know I, I just want to be the best leader I, I can be and the best employer I can be and you never know it all say that to the team all the time you know we never know it all and we've all got to keep learning from each other as well as you know what I can do outside of outside of work as well yeah. instead of sat watching the telly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> try and do a bit of reading yeah. show the kids lead by, yeah, example. Lead by example and off your phone come on let's get a book out <laughs> <laughs> um, so lastly then Vicky uh, in terms of any latest news I mean, we've had a bit of a chat around your, your business but yeah if there's anything that uh, you're up to that you'd like to share or even if it's just a case of letting us know where we can find you online with your website feel free yeah so I'd love everyone to go and look at our new website because Courtney who's our sales and marketing she was working on that most of last year so we've um it's all out there now we launched it in january so it's www.voicepower.co.uk but please go and have a look at it we'd love to hear any feedback um but it just yeah it's much simpler and it's all about the customer rather than about the tech so it's more just what this is going to do for you rather than bamboozling everybody with all the, the stuff that they really don't need to know and accessibility as well so that's huge for us this year so just making sure that um we're helping everybody you know as much as we can so people can work and people can use technology as a tool as as a help not something that's going to be scary 
So they're, yeah, they're our sort of biggest things that we're fo- focusing on this year, as well as continue to work in healthcare and the professional side. You know, we all love what we do at Voice Power. The team have been with us for such a long time because we love what we do. And and because it's technology as well, it never gets boring because it's always changing. And <laughs> yeah, and every, every client's needs are different as well. So yeah, it's, even though you're still working with the Dragon software, you know, you could be working with a solicitor one day, a clinician another day, and then somebody who's just working from home. So it's all and their needs are different. So it's um, it's always quite exciting, really. Well, thank you very much, Vicky. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. Thank you for all that you've shared. And I wish you all the best for the future success of the business. Thank you very much. You're welcome.